Okay. All right, everybody. Um, this is Brenda, and I'm going to be doing the radiology section of the CPT. Um, it's chapter 17 in your textbook. It's the <clears throat> red pages towards the end of your CPT book. The, I did make a, a couple of different, um, actually I guess I just made one puzzle. I made a bingo game, but we won't be, be we won't be playing bingo um, tonight. So <clears throat> I will send you the one puzzle that I made. So first off, um, I, from the textbook, make sure that um, you are aware of what the different um, positions are um, as far as where the body is at and then um, which way the uh, actual x-ray goes through the um, patient to get the film. And that's on page 517 and 518. <clears throat> There's plenty of room um, if you're wanting to write some of those down, but remember they were at the very beginning of our CPT book too. Let me see if I can quickly find that. On page um, XXII, so I believe that means Roman numeral 22 in the front of your book are the different planes. Okay. As far as ICD-10 coding when it comes to radiology, um, it could be any number of diagnoses. Uh, most of the times it's actually um, a symptom um, and not a confirmed diagnosis at the time of the x-ray. So you may have a lot of things from the um, signs and symptoms chapter. So you could have knee pain, you could have foot pain, toe pain, um, headache, um, and so forth. So it's going to be a lot like that. Um, even though the confirmed um, x-ray, the, sorry, the x-ray may confirm that the patient has um, a fractured foot or something like that, but that's, um, that comes uh, later. So the other thing to point out on page 519, uh, a radiology service can be performed as routine screening or for a sign or symptom. Here's the important thing. A routine screening might be performed with a preventative medic medicine exam, such as a routine chest x-ray. If a chest x-ray is performed as part of a preventative medicine exam, it is coded with the Z code. If you look up the ICD code for examination radiology, um, there's a sub-entry and it continues on to talk about the Z00.00 versus Z00.01. Um, make sure that you know this, um, actually like know it, and so that you don't even ever have to go look for it. Screening examinations are used when there are no signs or symptoms, but the provider is looking for a specific disease or illness. So screening means they don't have signs and symptoms, okay? Screening just simply means, for instance, that they've been exposed to or something like that, but they don't currently have symptoms. <clears throat> okay, let's see. That's really all that there is from section 17.2. Then on to 17.3, the actual CPT. So we have guidelines, just like we do with every section of CPT. They're the pages that have the green background. Um, <clears throat> again, separate procedure, we've talked about that. Um, many times it's that, that concept that's very hard to explain and put into words, but um, if it's a separate procedure, uh, <clears throat> or is it being um, done as part of a, uh, a bigger service. Unlisted services or procedures. Um, require onto the next page of your CPT a special report. When a service, a service that is rarely provided, unusual or variable, 
or new may require a special report. So anytime you use an unlisted service or procedure code, you're going to have to include uh, the special report. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know where this frog came from once I started talking. Um, supervision and interpretation and imaging guidance. When the, it's in green like this, when the print is in green, that means that it's new this year from um, how it was written last year. So f for you guys, that doesn't really mean much. Um, but as you look at um, next year's book when it comes and when you're familiar more with what's actually in the book, um, the green is going to stand out to you more and, and you're going to want to make sure that you pay attention to what that change may be um, because it's going to be something different in your head than what you had known it to be previously. Um, let's see, I'm going to go back to the textbook here, make sure I'm kind of following. Yes, okay. Administration of contrast. So that's um, page 522 in the textbook, page 473 in your CPT. So um, the phrase with contrast is used for codes and with procedures that are performed using contrast for the imaging enhancement. And if the um, contrast material is um, injected, so intravascularly, intra-articularly, -artic or intrathecally, um, that can be charged for separately, the procedure of doing that. So in the next paragraph, it goes on to say, so if it's an intra-articular injection used to um, um, in, uh, put a contrast in the joint, then you're going to use the appropriate joint injection code. If uh, it's arthrograph, arthro gosh, I can't talk today, I'm sorry. Arthrography, it is, um, is performed to also use the supervision and interpretation code. Um, bottom of the third paragraph for intrathecal injection, use also code 61055 or 62284. <clears throat> injection of the intravascular contrast material is part of with contrast when it comes to CT. Um, CTAs, MRIs, MRAs. Put a big star by this last paragraph. Oral and or rectal contrast administration alone does not qualify as a study for with contrast. So you don't get to charge separately, okay? Um, um, on that note, back up to the very first paragraph of the contrast material. So we're saying that yes, you get to charge another procedure for doing that contrast injection um, or introduction, however it's introduced. Don't forget that you are also going to have the HICPIX code, which I know we haven't done much, if anything, with that book yet, but there will be the actual code for that substance that you do get to code for as well. Um, so back to page 523 of your textbook that is talked about on the left hand column third paragraph when coding for contrast imaging an additional procedure may be may need to be reported watch for any parenthetical instructions following the imaging code um, the contrast material is not included in the radiologic procedure and can be reported separately, typically with a HICPIX level 2 code to identify the substance used. Okay. Talks a little bit then about the report. Then this information that is on the rest of page 523 where it talks about the different kinds of films. So scout, comparison, diagnostic, screening, and spot. That's not actually within the guidelines anywhere. So I made it part of my guidelines and I wrote um, my own definitions on page 473 so, um, so that I, I could remember some of these things. So um, I just, again, took it straight from the book that a scout is 
<clears throat> Sorry. Well, I don't know how to pause. Hmm. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so anyway, um, I added those definitions. The other thing that I put here is the information that's in that practical coding note box on page 523 of the textbook. Films that are unreadable, improperly positioned, or underdeveloped are considered operator error and are not coded. Some technicians will make a note in the medical record um, just for the documentation, but the patient should not be penalized and um, there should not be a, a bill or a code dropped for that. <clears throat> All right, then, just kind of trying to keep going back and forth here. The next thing that I did is, um, so now in the textbook, starting on 524, it starts going through all the different types of x-rays. So whether it's a plain x-ray, a CT, an MRI, and so forth. I took the um, empty space that's on the bottom of page 470 in my textbook, I'm sorry, in my CPT book, and I, I just briefly wrote down an explanation as to what each one of those is. So like for instance, um, from page 524, it says that a CT is a series of x-rays that produces cross-sectional pictures. MRI is um, slices of images um, that, are, that use magnetic field and the body's protons. And an MRA is an MRI of the blood vessels. So I just wrote that stuff down there because I thought it might become helpful. The other thing that I did, and it's actually on page 526 of the textbook, but those acronyms that are um, up on the top on the right-hand side of page 526, I wrote those on page 472 in my CPT book, um, the ones that I wasn't already familiar with, I should say. So MRI, MRA, we just wrote down the other page, so I don't need to write those again, um, but I did write the other ones. So, how do we actually begin coding for a, a radiology study? So first you need to know the anatomical location of what was x-rayed or scanned. You need to know, sometimes you need to know the number of views, and sometimes you need to know the type of the view. Um, and by that I mean if you want to look at CPT code 72114, let's see, 72114, <clears throat> is on page 477. And you'll notice that, first off, if you look at the base code, 72100, that says that we're doing an, an exam of the spine. It's the lumbar sacral spine, so that's more specific. And that it's two to three views. But when we drop down to 72114, it says that it's complete. It has to have a minimum of six views and it has to include a bending view. So that would be what we're, is meant by um, the type of the view. Um, and then lastly, um, what, whether any modifiers um, would be needed. Um, oh, number of views. The number of views, so you're gonna see that a lot in these code descriptions. The one we just read, for example, 72100, two or three views. The number of views does not necessarily um, match up with the number of films that were taken. So the code is written based off of the number of views, not the number of actual um, films. It could a, a view could require multiple films to get the view. So it's the number of views. Then I thought I would take just a second to go through um, exercise 17.3. And I'm just gonna say what 
um, catches my attention in all five of these. So that as you're starting to figure out how to how to pull these apart, um, what what's going to be important, possibly more important than some of the other things in the note. So number one, we have a contrast radiograph. Um, radiograph of the salivary glands and ducts is performed resulting in a diagnosis of a salivary fistula. What are the codes? So the first thing that I'm looking at here is, I'm going to read the rest of the question because um, that is relevant. So it says, for the supervision and interpretation of the procedure, okay, that's why these all have a 26 on them. So we are doing a, an x-ray with contrast. The location is salivary glands. So I'm just going to go to x-ray, salivary glands. Number two, we have a CT image of the abdomen and pelvis were obtained without IV contrast as follow-up to a splenic injury. What's the code for the CT scan? So here we go. It's a CT scan, so I'm going to go to CT. And then I'm going to go to abdomen, pelvis, and look for without IV contrast. Number three, child comes into the ED. We have an x-ray done of the from the nose to the rectum, code the service. So I'm going to x-ray, and I'm going to just follow the suit there, nose to rectum. Four, Nasal airway obstruction and deformity uh, 48 hours after assault. Physician orders an x-ray of the facial bones with a waters view, Caldwell view, and lateral view. So there we know that we've got three views. There may be a code for each one of those separately. There may just be a code that says um, x-ray, facial bones, one to three views, more than three views. And then number five, the last one, um, it looks like it's an MRI. We have to break that down further to say that it was of the cervical spine and that it was done without and then with contrast. Um, you're gonna see that a lot where they're gonna start, they're gonna do a study first without any contrast, get their pictures, then they're gonna use contrast to see um, what shows up differently so um, watch for, there are um, some codes that actually specifically say exactly that. So you wouldn't be using two separate codes. There's one code that is a combination thereof. So let's see, okay. From there, <clears throat> I'm going straight to my CPT book and I'm going to hold it up really quick because I know you guys are looking like I got absolutely nothing there. Oh, and it's going to be backwards. But you can see there I do my bubble and highlight um, like I always talk about. And I circle or underline what the, what the area is that's being x-rayed so I can quickly tell the difference or how many views. So um, let's see. I have, there's a lot of these that start on um, or end on one column and go up to the next. So that's why I have a lot of arrows um, circling back so that I continue to look at all of those codes. Let me see. Just looking for anything out of the ordinary here. <clears throat> When you get to page 485 of the CPT, um, the heart we did already, so 485, 486, 487, 88, 89, 90, 91 um, are already done. Diagnostic ultrasound, now we're caught back up with the textbook. I'm on page 493 of the CPT. All diagnostic ultrasound examinations require permanently recorded images with measurements when such measurements are clinically indicated. A final written report should be issued for inclusion into the patient's medical record. 
then I have a star by for those anatomic regions that have complete and or limited ultrasound codes note the elements that um, comprise of a complete exam the report should contain a description of those elements or the reason that the element could not be visualized if less than the required elements for a complete exam are reported <clears throat> The limited code for the anatomic region should be used once per patient exam. A limited exam of an anatomic region should not be reported for the same exam session as a complete exam of that same region. That makes sense, right? Your code, you would be um, double dipping. Let's see. I took, and so here, um, in the textbook, it talks about all these, the A, let me see, let me find where it is. Um, well, I wrote it in here from last night. There we go. Um, back to your textbook on page 527. It's that second paragraph under diagnostic ultrasound. There are different types of ultrasound scans. Some types include an A mode, a B scan, a B mode, M mode, A mode. So I took and wrote um, some of those um, descriptions right in my CPT. So for instance, on page 493 where CPT talks about what an A mode is, they already say that it's one dimensional which is what our textbook tells us, but I don't know what A stands for. So I wrote that in here, that it's amplitude, and I got that from the textbook, and that it's most commonly used for um, ophthalmology services. Um, M mode, I just underlined the word movement within the CPT description because that's what M stands for. B is two-dimensional, and the B stands for brightness, so I wrote that at the end. <clears throat> okay, next page 494 under chest. Here is where we get our, um, or we see our definition for what a complete ultrasound exam is versus a focused ultrasound exam when they're talking about the chest. Um, next column, abdomen and per rectal peritoneum, same thing. It provides us with the definition, so what's what do you have to have in order to code that? Page 495, um, pelvis. So pelvis is broken down into um, OB, so whether it's an obstet obstetrical or non-obstetrical um, patient. So you'll see um, non-OB are on page 496. So make sure that you're in the right um, section when you're doing that. So, for instance, 76801 is an ultrasound of the pregnant uterus. Our first code under non OB is just ultrasound transvaginal. Um, it doesn't say that, that it's not pregnancy. So, you know, if you want to just write on page um, 497 that, that those are non OB codes, um, whatever helps you out. Okay? Um, the other thing I did, because these guidelines for pelvis for obstetrical that are on page 495 of the CPT, um, so within, so it says obstetrical and then it says codes 76801 and 76802 include da 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 and it's the whole rest of that first paragraph. Well, I'm not going to remember all that, and I'm probably, in all honesty, not going to go back and look to see if there was something specific about that if I were in a rush for time. So what I did is, next to um, 76801 where the actual code is, I took and I drew an arrow pointing it down to that paragraph. Same with 76802. And I know, again, this is going to show backwards, but let's see. That's what I mean that I did. Um, and then I continued to do the same thing on the next pages because it does that all the way through. So I just wrote myself a note in the border next to all of those columns to see C page, C page, C page, um, so that we could, I would remember that there was further information that is probably 
and certainly is relevant enough to pay attention to. Um, okay, I'm going to stop this one right there.